keep dying from the very first day. And the Spirit of God keeps dying from the day he left you. So is you. So if you think about it for a moment, you don't own a physical pair of heels as the victim in your painting who is tempted or tempted in his fear. We're at the corner of 83rd and State Street. We're at the corner of 83rd and State Street right here. We're coming up on another corner. And at that moment, you are not free to say no. Jennifer Flores, no. No, Jennifer Flores, Jennifer Flores, Jennifer Flores, no. Jennifer Flores, no. Sandy police say it happened. Now at 10, tragedy in Sandy. Witnesses describing a horrific scene after a teenage girl is hit and killed by a school bus. Plus, oh, over the past several years, Governor Cox has committed to taking care of and supporting the trans community and listening with kindness and care. So we're hoping that he will listen to us now and veto that bill. Protesters at the Capitol tonight hoping Governor Cox will hear their plea to veto SB 16. And footage of the attack on former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband released to the public. Live from Utah's first TV station, ABC4 News celebrates 75 years. Welcome to ABC4 News at 10, I'm Glenn Mills. And I'm Emily Flores. We thank you for joining us here tonight. Kenya School District mourning the loss of Jennifer Flores Diaz, a 15-year-old Jordan High School student hit and killed by a bus this afternoon, a memorial growing in her honor at the site tonight. ABC4's Courtney Johns joining us live with the very latest, Courtney. Yeah, Emily, the district just identified the young lady, sending out an email to parents and students, letting them know what had happened to this young lady, saying she was a 10th grader at Jordan High. Now, behind me is where all of it happened along State Street. There's a memorial that's growing at this time. There, you can see a candle there, as well as a card written in English and Spanish. And people started showing up here, leaving items, paying their respects around seven, just hours after this young lady was killed. According to Sandy police. This all happened around one this afternoon when a bus driver turned left at the intersection, getting onto State Street, hitting the team. Police say 16 kids from Hillcrest High were actually on that bus when it happened. And we talked to a man who watched it all happen, saying the bus driver had no idea what had happened until he ran up to the bus. I had to jump out of my vehicle and stop the bus driver. He jumped in front of him and I made him back off very quickly, but I knew that it was fatal because of how close I was and what I saw. I knew that she had passed away. And we're also hearing from Canyon School District tonight, the superintendent releasing a statement that says in part, Canyon's district sends our heartfelt condolences to the family of the student, as well as the student's friends, teachers, and school staff who struggle with the pain and loss of a loved one. And I actually spoke to a woman who works in this area who says that she saw this young lady walk her along the street regularly to pick up her brother from school just a few blocks away. And she says the family lives just down the the street. Reporting live in Sandy, Courtney Johns, ABC4 News. Courtney, thank you. A refinery that extracts magnesium from the Great Salt Lake getting blamed for causing some of Utah's bad air quality. Newly released findings from a 2017 study on winter air pollution finding the U.S. magnesium refinery southwest of the Great Salt Lake emits 10 to 25 percent of the fine air particles that form those massive inversion clouds hanging over the valley at times in the winter. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration conducting that research. We did reach out to U.S. Magnesium Refinery for comment, 
on this study, but we have not heard back. All right, let's head over for a first look at the forecast on this Friday. Yep, as we head into the weekend, Chief Meteorologist Alana Brophy tracking everything we need to know. Happy Friday, friends. Yes, we're tracking actually some light snow out there in portions of Davis and Weber County as well as up in Cache Valley. Let's take a look at the storm tracker radar because you can actually see where we're seeing rain versus snow and mixed precipitation. So important tonight to know as we see those temperatures on the valley floor staying above freezing for the time being. Okay, so we zoom in and we can see in and around the Salt Lake Valley, you see from Bountiful to West Jordan, that pink, that's the mixed precipitation where we've got rain kind of mixing in with snow, but it's straight snow from Bountiful North to Ogden where we are dealing with, yeah, definite straight snow through Brigham City and Cache Valley. Now, it's light snow, but it is starting to stick on surfaces, so a heads up there as temperatures get colder into the overnight. Backside of the Wasatch kind of showing off how, yes, we've got snow in and around Park City and towards Morgan. The backside of the Wasatch also under that winter weather advisory. Out near Dugway, some mixed precipitation popping up on the radar there as well. The western side of the valley dealing with straight snow. So, active skies holding on. Now, we already saw some active conditions up north today. This is what it looks like as we look at those kind of totals popping up. When it comes down to it, we've got current temperatures giving you an idea of what we're facing. And those numbers just below freezing in Logan, which is why we are seeing snow there. But we've got 30s and upper 30s in Salt Lake City as well as Ogden. So on the valley floor, that is rain. As you get to the benches, it becomes mixed precipitation. 38 in St. George at this hour. Now, I mentioned that we definitely had that alert, a winter weather advisory. It was extended throughout the day today, and it's going to hold on for the mountains as we head through tomorrow. As we take a look, giving you an idea of exactly where that is, that purple shows the entire Wasatch Range. It initially started as just the northern portion of the mountain range. Now it's the entire Wasatch as well as the backside where we are looking at accumulating snow. This holds on until noon tomorrow. How much snow are we going to get? Answers coming up in my full forecast in just a few moments. Glenn, Emily, back to you. All right, thank you, Alana. Well, turning now to developing news tonight, body cam footage released allegedly showing the beating death of 29-year-old Tyree Nichols during a traffic stop earlier this month. Federal authorities who have seen the video calling it appalling, ensuring they're now preparing for any potential unrest nationwide tonight. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Memphis. Tonight, newly released body cam footage authorities say shows the alleged beating death of 29-year-old Tyree Nichols during a traffic stop. Police say five now-fired Memphis officers initially pulled Nichols over for alleged reckless driving before Nichols fled on foot and was confronted again, this time more physical. The Nichols family's attorneys saying the young father asked officers, what did I do, pleading to go home, calling out for his mom. Nichols was hospitalized for three days before he succumbed to his injuries. But for me to find out that my son was calling my name and I was only feet away and did not even hear him, you have no clue how I feel right now. Their lawyers calling for justice and systemic police reform to prevent any further potentially unjustified police killings. Also applauding the swift actions from local, state, and federal authorities for not delaying firing and then bringing charges against five Memphis police officers, saying that should be the blueprint for future similar incidents. No longer can you tell us we got to wait six months to a year, even though we got a video with evidence of the excessive force in the crime. Police saying Nichols was initially pulled over for alleged reckless driving before he fled on foot and was confronted again, this time more physical. Nichols was hospitalized for three days before he succumbed to his injuries. The police officers, Tadarius Bean, Demetrius Haley, Desmond Mills Jr., Emmett Martin III, and Justin Smith, each now facing second-degree murder and other charges in connection to Nichols' death. An internal investigation concluded the officers used excessive force and failed to intervene or render aid. A federal civil rights investigation is also underway. FBI Director Christopher Wray says he's alerted his FBI field offices across the nation to prepare just in case anything gets out of hand tonight. The Nichols family today urging any demonstrations tonight to be calm and peaceful. In Memphis, M. Wynn, ABC News. 
Thank you, Em. Here at home, statements being released following the footage. The SLCPD saying in part, we strongly denounce the inexcusable conduct of the five people involved in the death of Tyree Nichols. Their actions are unbecoming of police officers. They do not represent the honorable and courageous men and women who make up law enforcement throughout our country and Salt Lake City. Every day, the Salt Lake City Police Department focuses on broadening our training and practices to preserve trust and respect with those we serve. The Department of Public Safety and NAACP delivering a unified statement. The Utah NAACP President Janetta Williams saying, quote, the total disregard for human life is heartbreaking. I stand with Tyree Nichols' family and our community in the mourning of this young man's life. Tonight, protesters taking to the state capitol, speaking out against Senate Bill 16 focused on transgender youth, many of them passionately chanting trans rights are human rights and urging Governor Spencer Cox to veto the bill. This bill uh, would really harm the trans community throughout Utah. It would take away the ability for trans kids um, to get the care and support that they need in order to live their best and most healthy lives. ABC4's Kate Gardner following the story throughout the day, speaking to lawmakers on both sides of the issue and explains more on this controversial bill now headed to the governor's desk where it could become law. Children and teens who've already been receiving treatment for gender dysphoria for at least six months will be exempt. The bill also allows young adults to file a malpractice suit against health care providers if they decide they didn't consent to treatment as a child. Those in favor of the bill arguing that the lack of science behind the long-term effects of transgender medical treatments is one reason the bill is needed. Like bill sponsor Senator Michael Kennedy. With great compassion, love, and desire to help, all of this is focused on the, the fact that we are trying to help children and families. Those in opposition arguing that passing the bill emboldens anti-transgender rhetoric within the state, like Senator Jen Plum, who has a transgender daughter. In general, these are kiddos who already feel in some ways outside or othered, um, and this is, is hard messaging. A new abortion bill would add more restrictions to Utah's trigger law. As it stands, Utah law bans abortion outright, except in some cases like rape, incest, or to save the life of the mother. But Representative Carrick Berkland's uh, proposed victim services amendments bill would cut back the time frame that rape and incest victims can get an abortion from conception to 18 weeks. The bill also adds provisions like free counseling for victims, health care coverage during pregnancy, and for one year of the baby's life and improving sexual assault trainings for law enforcement. Coming up, a group of lawmakers on Capitol Hill pushing for legislation to ensure future generations are taught about the Holocaust. And footage of the attack on former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband has been released to the public. We'll show it to you when we return. And this is what it looked like in Smithfield. Cache Valley picking up on that light snow this morning with another round. Filling in tonight, thanks to Ted Bowman for sending this our way. Nice to see some powder, only for a portion of the state. What you need to know, Utah's most accurate forecast.